Hey, good morning and welcome to this day on this really early cold winter morning. I hope you're having a great start to your day. Today I want to talk about one of the most tender, I think one of the most powerful chapters in the book of Psalms. Um, this was written by King David, Psalm 51. Right after, uh, he wrote this right after probably the lowest and one of the darkest moments of his life. Of course, we know the story um, his sin with Bathsheba and how he that led him uh, on a journey where it spiraled his life out of control one bad decision after another one lie after another one tragedy after another and before you knew it this man who was the apple of God's eye God's chosen anointed king of Israel had not only lied he had not only committed adultery he had not only murdered he had forsaken the god that called him and brought him out from being a sheep herder and placed him upon the throne of israel and it was a great fall for a great man and we can uh i love this psalm because we can relate with it and, and so many of us uh, can relate with this i know that i can personally it's a powerful uh, open expression of when David was confessing his sin before God and then it's a beautiful picture of how God restored this broken man this broken vessel I um, I love to be surrounded in my life in my ministry uh, my friends I love to be surrounded with broken vessels people that have been broken uh, because I have been broken uh, and uh, I am not perfect and what you see before you is a person who understands the grace of God, who understands the forgiveness and mercy of God. Mark Lowry is a good buddy of ours, and he made a statement one time, I think um, maybe it was at a concert uh, we were doing together, and I've never forgotten this, but he says, broken people pour out the most oil. I love that, and that is the truth. And I believe that God wants to use broken people because He gets great glory out of a vessel that's been broken that He can make whole again. So I want you to know today, if you've sinned and if you've fallen short, like we all have, and it seems that to you, it's like, well, Jason, you don't know my sin. My sin is so bad. Well, you know what? Look at David. I mean, here is the man after God's own heart, God's anointed, a murderer, adulterer, a thief, liar, he, he had run the gamut of sins and failures and uh, we can find great hope. And I want you to look at, his, look at his prayer as he begins to pour out his heart to God. In verse 1 he says, have mercy upon me, O God. Maybe that's your prayer today. According to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. That first verse is so powerful. It's showing us that there's not only just a little bit of mercy. With God, there's a multitude of mercy. You realize that when we go to this ocean of mercy, that it, it's never exhausted, it never runs dry. The scripture also says that there are mercies available for us that are new every day. It's a multitude of mercy. And I want you to also pay attention that when God forgives, He forgets. You see, he's not just covering our sin. He's not just covering our transgressions. He blots them out. He is blotting out our transgressions as if they never happened. What a glorious Savior that we serve. Verse 2, wash me thoroughly, David. This is David's cry. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Only God can wash us. Only his blood can cleanse us. Because you know why? We've sinned against him. Especially this sin, it was a sexual nature. And so the temple, uh, the, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So when David had committed this sin, he said that I have sinned against you, O God. In verse 4, he says that against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speak and be clear when thou judge. Now, uh, verse 6 is one of my favorite verses of the entire chapter, and I want to read that. I'm kind of skipping. Um, verse 6 says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. You understand that the first step for us to being made uh, a broken vessel, being made whole again, the first step for us being forgiven, the first step for us being 
brought back into that wonderful fellowship with God and, and, and away from his chastening to experience his mercy, we have to have truth. We have to be honest with ourselves, what we have done, who we are in light of God's word. And so many times we don't get to experience God's mercy simply because we haven't dealt with truth. Do you realize that you cannot separate truth and mercy? They go hand in hand. And sometimes as the old saying says, the truth hurts. But friend, that's a lie from the enemy because here's the deal. He wants to keep us from the truth because he realizes that we begin to be honest with ourselves and confess that honesty before God who already knows us better than we know ourselves. That is when God is enabled. We enable the power of the Holy Spirit to begin to do a work in our lives. And God from his throne on high can come down and make that multitude of mercy that's already there. He can make it available to us and pour it into our lives. And then he can begin to wash us and cleanse us. And the best part of all, blot out our transgressions. Remove them as far as the east is from the west. What a wonderful God we serve. This is the kind of God that I love to worship and I love to sing about. I love to share with good friends just like you today. Maybe you're, you're listening or watching me today and you're broken. You're a broken vessel. Maybe you have failed and it seems like you've let everybody that you love in your life down and you have sinned against the God that you've once served so faithfully. Friend, don't believe the lie from the enemy. Be honest with yourself. Confess your sin today, even now, before God. And let Him blot out your transgression. Let Him make available that multitude of mercy. I want you to notice, all right, in verse 8, make me, here's David's prayer, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. If you will confess today with an honest heart, God will exchange your brokenness with joy and gladness. And when God fixes something, he's just not patching it together. He's making it brand new. Look at verse 10, and we're going to close today. Create in me a clean heart. Oh God, renew a right spirit within me. God just doesn't patch us. He makes us new. Confess today. Let's let our lives be an open book before God. Let's let him know that we're honest with ourselves. Let's be honest with him. Let that multitude of mercy invade your life. Be dr I want you to drown in that ocean of grace and mercy that God has for you today. Let's, let's walk in truth and let's worship our Savior. And let's let this loving God know that we are thankful that he has blotted out our transgressions. Share this word with someone today. Confess your sin and he is faithful and just to forgive. God bless you in Jesus' name.